I Hate Feeding Day, written by Mr. Michael Squid, narrated by Sean Hackle. Every week, as the days leading up to feeding day tick away, my stomach turns and I have trouble falling asleep. I struggle to focus on any given task, and the smell of the dank, dark barn seems to taint the air no matter where I go. Pa explained, it's something I need to do, however. He made it clear one day he won't be around, and I'll be the only one left to feed her. I have just one memory of Ma from before. I remember her warm smile and loving eyes looking down at me in her arms. Strange, to think someone is capable of changing so very much in the course of a lifetime. Ma still smiles on occasion, but it's a smile that nobody ought to see. It's a smile that sends shivers up my spine. I like that the musty barn stays dark. Pa unscrewed the light bulbs when it started to get really bad. I must have been around four years old when it began. I only have glimpses of fractured memories. I remember one night seeing Ma standing in the kitchen, red and wet, blood glistening on her chin and cheeks. She was giggling and staring at the wall with crazed, vacant eyes. I didn't understand what was so funny. Another time, I woke up to her, leaning over my bed, and her face looked strange. Her mouth was open wide, and the skin of her face looked stretched thin. When I screamed, she left in a hurry, but I didn't fall back asleep that night. It wasn't long after that when Pa moved her to the barn. That's where she's been ever since. Every week, the day comes when it's my turn to feed her. I don't look in the heavy feed buckets, but they smell rotten. I carry one in each hand to the barn, setting them down as I unlock the large padlock with the key hanging from a ring of twine. The moment the lock clicks, I hear the chains rattle around from inside the wooden barn. It's Ma, up and about, eager to eat. I slide the heavy wooden door open about a foot or two, just enough for me to slip inside. I found that When less light from the doors gets in, the fewer details you can see. And that's a good thing. Cracks in the old wooden beams cast slivered rays of sunlight that highlight the contours of her body. Her massive, bulging spine pokes at the skin from the inside in harsh angles. Her head even in shadow, looks more hideous every time. There's always some new growth, some nodule or bulge eager to form a new appendage. I can't tell how many arms she has, or which of the lean, sinewy limbs were the originals. They all scuttle rapidly the moment I step foot into the rank air of the barn. Crooked fingers knock and scratch at the floorboards as Ma bounds towards me. Every time, my heart jumps. And I think of what would happen to me if her chain snapped. Still, every time, it yanks her to a dead stop just a few feet from me. It's then 
I can smell her gamey odor. Sour and strange. I try hard to keep my eyes down and not look. But I can still see that horrible grin in my peripheral vision. I see her long yellow teeth and sharp features through skin stretched thin over her jagged, warped bones. Her hot, raspy breaths reach my face as I lower the buckets to the floor, and I have to fight back the urge to vomit. I then take the broom propped against the wall and use it to push the buckets of animal innards, sliding the slop towards those eager fingers that jitter with anticipation. I then hear the sickening sound of Ma feasting on the coppery mess from within the buckets. I hurriedly make my way out the door, sliding the heavy thing shut, and I insert the padlock into the loop. I'll then spend the rest of the day trying my best to distract myself. I wish desperately to forget the details I couldn't help but notice. Details like how her eyes seem to jut out as if perched on stalks that have been slowly growing out from her skull. How her varicose veins, so prominent in each spindly limb, seem to squirm on their own. Pa never told me why she changed. I honestly don't think he even knows. Maybe something came down from the sky, or up from the soil, and took over, making a home in her before deciding to redecorate. Maybe it's genetic, and one day I'll be laughing at the wall as someone else's blood dribbles down my chin. If that ever happens, I don't want to be kept in a barn. I'd want someone to put a bullet in my brain. I'd wished for it to end more times than I can say. I prayed for Pa to find her dead and still swarming with flies. I'd pray he'd finally have the guts to put a bullet in her grotesque cranium. That never happened though. And week after week, the dreaded feeding day would arrive and each one would be worse. But I got my wish today. I hauled the fitted buckets of slosh and muck to the barn today for the very last time. I stopped halfway there, processing the sight of the splintered wood from freshly snapped beams on the barn wall. Metal links from the busted chain in the dirt, gleamed in the light of the sun. Still, it wasn't relief I felt when I realized Ma was gone. <laughs>